for our beautiful souls, lesson 99 today. Salvation is my function here. And yesterday we were affirming that I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. And we've talked about this quite a bit through the lessons and um, before the review and during the review uh, about God has a perfect plan for salvation and, and any time that we hold a grievance that that keeps us away from experiencing that plan and our part in it. So now we've been brought back to that we will consciously accept our part in God's plan for salvation and that here we're recognizing that salvation is our only function here, which is synonymous with saying that God's will is our only function here because salvation is his will, that we are to accept no suffering that we accept nothing but his kingdom, to accept nothing but the glory that he has given us fully in every moment and has never been tainted or changed. But that is what we are to accept. So in here he starts with saying too, salvation and forgiveness are the same. So a means by which to, to be in the experience of salvation, forgiveness is integral to that. Right? Because we've talked about that as well, that forgiveness is our function as well. Right? So now we're starting to build more and more concepts on each other and realize that this doesn't negate what we've already affirmed, but almost adds to it. So we've already affirmed that function, um, salvation, sorry, forgiveness is part of our function. Now we're just adding to it that salvation is part of that too. And as he says here, they are the same, just seemingly different forms of the exact same concept. Both terms imply something which is impossible, but yet has occurred because this is our experience as we talk about all the time. We have free will, including we can choose to believe in that which is not, not possible, right? So, which results in a state of conflict, right? And as he says here, salvation is a borderline between truth and illusion. It reflects the truth because it is the means by which you can escape illusions. It is not the truth because it undoes what was never done. So this is an interesting concept that the text explores quite a bit of saying that salvation and forgiveness are only temporary tools that we use because ultimately when we receive the awareness of what we really are, which is synonymous with saying going to heaven, you know, going home completely, uh, being one with God once again, that the need for salvation and forgiveness are no longer there because when we come back to the full awareness of unity and being whom what we really are as God created us, that we no longer would have a need for the idea of salvation, of the need of lack of suffering, because it would no longer be in our minds. You know, remember, this is all a dream of separation that we're having, uh, albeit seemingly very real, and within that, lots of rules and complexity, but ultimately, it's the awareness of reality that will be the resolution to all the complexity that we seem to be perceiving. So, it's a, it's a borderland between those places, and I love here as he talks about, I feel quite clearly, that he says that it's it's Holy Spirit's job, um, and I remember when I first read this lesson, it really helped me understand Holy Spirit's position, because Holy Spirit, as he says here, um, is unshaken uh, by what you look upon, right, on sin, death, and pain, on grief, separation, loss, yet he does know one thing still to be true. So Holy Spirit is that perfect bridge that sees what you think you see, but also knows who you really are, and helps you bridge that understanding. So that is one of uh, the main functions of Holy Spirit, that it helps us bridge what we think we're seeing, using those symbols that we're attached to and everything. You know, as I've said many, many times before, Holy Spirit will, give you, will use everything that you give it to help you forgive and heal your mind back to truth, right? So Holy Spirit sees what you think you see, but also knows whom what you really are knows the truth of you being a child of God and shows you how to make those one again through the perceived experience you seem to be having and using that um, awareness and, and transforming it and is unshaken you know as we talk about many times like whom what you are has never been changed or altered by what you've believed and created in your mind it's still intact fully because what God has created is eternal right so <sighs> this is Holy Spirit's job to help us experience that within this life, within the still perception of this world, um, but to, to still experience salvation 
and, and forgiveness fully while still, you know, being here but not of this world any longer. And we've talked about that a couple times now, right? That we will truly um, disengage from all that is not reflective of truth. We'll still be here, we'll still have a function here, but our function will be one that we share with all and literally the way that we operate will be completely, completely different. It's really quite beautiful. So as he says here, no matter what has come up in your day, you know, remind yourself that salvation is my only function here. God is still love and this is not his will. So if you're experiencing any disruption, reminding yourself that salvation is my only function. That's the only thing that I need to care about. That's the only thing that I need to focus on, that I wish for God's will and recognize. And again, we've been reminded in this lesson, the Holy Spirit will help us transform that through forgiveness. As he says here, let it let yourself be in the light and look upon no obstacle that would keep you from his will. Forgive all thoughts which would oppose the truth and of your completeness, unity, and peace. So this is where that mind training is now starting to kick in, that we need to literally deny those feelings that keep us from uh, feeling at peace and unified, but at the same time, being willing to offer them up willingly to have them reinterpreted. So this isn't just about mindless positive thinking and ignoring things, but like asking for the correction. And know that, I'm, I'm sure many of you through the lessons already are starting to experience this, when you uh, go through these lessons that naturally you will be inspired to resolutions of a lot of these issues uh, that are standing in the way of peace and unity and, and holiness. Uh, that, that that just naturally starts to happen, that miracle mindedness starts to occur and that your habit becomes miracles instead of grievances. Um, so that, that shift will start taking place in your mind. So again, this isn't just about throwing them away, but as he says, forgive those thoughts, right? Correct them, be willing to correct them, sit with them, ask to, to see them in a different light. Right? I could choose peace instead of this. Right, we've, we've already gone through quite a few lessons that help us, but as he says here, like even using applying today's lesson, you know, salvation is my only function here. Salvation and forgiveness are one. Salvation is my only function here. God is still love, and this is not his will. Right? And applying it directly to that, and then looking at it, because now you've introduced truth to it, and now that's, that's sort of like implanted the truth, and now that will kind of sprout within whatever issue it is you seem to be experiencing. So my loves, enjoy this lesson. I love you all so much, and I shall see you at tomorrow's lesson. Bye.